The biggest games are made by the biggest companies whose number one aim is to make lots of money. And usually making more money means selling more copies of your game. But what if? What if a company cared less about that and more about making a good game? Resident Evil 7 launched at the beginning of 2017 and it took the age-old series back to its horror roots while revolutionising the formula by shifting the perspective to first person. It reviewed very well indeed, scoring an 86 on Metacritic on the PS4 and 83 on PC. For many, it was viewed as a comeback after the more action-heavy silliness that was Resident Evil's 5 and, oh god, 6. So how come Resident Evil 7 didn't sell as well? Resi 6 was pretty well panned by a lot of fans and critics. The PS4 port currently has 60 on Metacritic, while the original Xbox 360 version has a 67. Resident Evil 6 was criticised for departing too far from the survival horror genre to be a set-piece ridden roller coaster of shooting and kicking stuff. Now, Resident Evil 5 was a little bit better and truer. But it was the game that gave us Chris Redfield punching a boulder to death. So Resident Evil 7, despite its critical acclaim and triumphant return to survival horror roots, just didn't perform as well as its action-heavy siblings when it comes to sales. You said, oh god, Resident Evil 6, like, it's a bad game, Mike. Yeah, it's really bad. That's actually pertinent to the point of this video, because uh, the point is that the those games that didn't review as well sold more than Resident Evil 7 for some reason. Resident Evil 5 became the fastest selling game in the franchise history upon its release in the UK. In 2013, it was declared the biggest selling Capcom game ever. Then Resident Evil 6 did really well as well, shifting 7.1 million units. And last year's critically more successful Resident Evil 7, well, it only sold a pitiful 5.1 million units so far. 5.1. Why, why even bother? You know, it's, Shame, isn't it? It's only five million people playing your game. Jesus. Not even worth it. No. But here's where this gets interesting. Capcom is, or at least it says it is, completely cool with that. Here's what Capcom Europe's COO Stuart Turner told GamesIndustry.biz this week. Quote, while we have shareholders to appease, it's not just about commercial performance. There is an artistic element that comes in where we know this is the right way. And while if we compare RE7 to RE6, the absolute numbers are not the same, in terms of the profitability, it's completely fine. It ticked all of our boxes internally, it was really well received. And in some respects, getting some very good review scores count as much for Capcom as a game that sells millions and millions and millions. And here comes the knockout blow, quote, we prefer a game that got a 9 and sold less than a 6 but sold more. That's a big sentence that, that's a big sentence, yeah. that's a big company, that's Capcom saying we'd rather a game got a 9 out of 10 and sold a little bit less than got a 6 out of 10 and sold more because it kind of flies in the face of what you ex expect and what other companies have said in the past. Sales and, and targets, that is what drives them. They're companies, they need to make money, they want to make money. They've got loads of employees to pay, they've got shareholders that they've got to hit targets for. So it's all about cash for them at the end of the day. So it's, it is strange to hear Capcom saying we'd rather a more critically acclaimed game that didn't sell as well mm. um, because it, it means it's just unusual. It just yeah. doesn't. I, I'm, I'm guessing he's exaggerating a little bit. Are you talking in terms of selling more, say 50% more, like a difference between 5 million units and 7.5 million units, or something in those ballparks. But if you're talking about a 6 out of 10 game that sells millions and millions and millions, say, uh, example PUBG, although that's not 6 out of 10 according to Metric, it's something higher than that. But in my eyes, it's a 6 out of 10 game that sold millions and millions and millions. If you're talking many multiple times of that 5 million sales, let's say 50 million sales, I'm sure he wouldn't snub that, that's for sure. So it is unusual to hear a company talk about the performance of their games like this. Of course, any company will tend to be positive about the performance of its own products, but you don't have to look too hard to find a gaming companies slamming their own games for not selling well enough. Back in 2013, Square Enix decried the fact that the critically praised Tomb Raider only managed to shift 3.4 million copies. How disappointing. Just this year, EA said that Star Wars Battlefront 2 had fallen short of expectations after selling just the 7 million units. EA had been hoping to sell 8 million, while some analysts had even pegged it at 14 million copies sold over the course of the financial year. That said though, to give full credit, EA is actually no stranger to the idea of a better game selling less than expected. The company said back in early 2017 that it saw the cracking FPS game Titanfall 2 as a success 
despite shifting far fewer copies than expected. EA CEO Andrew Wilson told an investor call at the time, quote, we're not seeing it as an underperformance at this juncture. The way we think about Titanfall is that we have what is one of the best games of this year and certainly one of the best games in this generation of consoles. But anyway, while Resident Evil 7 may have only sold 5 million units so far, it's still selling remarkably well a year and a half later. Capcom's marketing director Antoine Molan told Games Industry that the company isn't so focused Focused on launch day sales these days anyway. Quote, we are less focused on day one sales these days too. We are looking much more at the long term. And in that case, RE7 is performing amazingly. Even now, after almost two years, it's still the VR flagship title. That helps keep the game selling well. I do like the idea of a company saying that they would rather make good games and, and I want to believe them when they say that. I, I, you know, especially when it's, if it was something like CD Projekt or something like that, you believe them when they say that they care about quality and, and it makes sense for them because that's who they are as a, as a business. People believe that they have the best games. So to Capcom saying it is, is great and it just means better games for me, I personally much, much preferred Resident Evil 7 to 5 and 6 and I will happily buy the next one if it's kind of more faithful to what Resident Evil 7 was. It just makes sense for me. I don't know what happened around the time of Resident Evil 5 and 6. Every single game was trying to be Call of Duty. Every single game had to have like these big blockbuster moments and helicopter crashes and you know drill sergeants shouting in your face about getting up soldier and stuff like that. It was a lot of that for, for a period. Now it seems like every game wants to be, I don't know, Battle Royale, I guess. Yeah, I think what they're saying here does make a lot of sense. Obviously, financially, you want a game to sell well, but on the other side of it, you can think of games like Timefall 2 and The Witcher 3 from that from that, for, for that case as well. Games that sell well because of word of mouth years later, mm. years and years, years and years and years later, maybe not Timefall 2 as a, as a great example, but The Witcher 3, that is for sure. It didn't sell probably loads on, uh, um, on release, but people are still buying that now, uh, critically acclaiming it. Why? Because it is a, just a well-made game. It's an awesome game, and the tale of that game is going to be so much longer, and and it's going to be remembered throughout time as one of the best games ever made by a large part of the community. And that's not because they try to churn it out and uh, just to try and make money of it to sell day one sales, move on to a sequel the very next year. This is what maybe Capcom are waking up to here um, by by saying that they need to make good games first and foremost. Maybe Maybe they'll get remembered longer, maybe they'll sell more for longer and, and in that case people might buy um, the sequels when they bring them out in three, four years, five years time or whatever. I think that's the best way to look at it, it allows you to be more creative and not churn games out and uh, things like that, all the other problems that come with trying to just try and make money out of games. So it's definitely the best thing to be saying from a consumer point of view because this is what we want, we just want good games. So what do you guys think? Would you like more big AAA companies to be talking the way that Capcom have here? Let us know down in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new around here, check out more of our content on your screen there. Support us on Patreon using that link there. We'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.